And you know, in yeah. Canada, we get addicted so. to debt, right? So a lot of people, especially over the last three, four, five years, they got into real estate investing pretty heavily. So if you are a new investor and you got in when rates were, like you said, one or two percent. Welcome to another episode of the Refined Real Estate Podcast. It's Manny here with my co-hosts, Ian and Janelle. The three of us are real estate investors. We're based out of Halifax, Nova Scotia. We have bought and sold over 60 units. We've burned, we've done flips, we've done wholesales, we've done a whole lot. And we're here to share our experiences with you guys. Ian and Janelle are also mortgage brokers with the Blake Wilson Group. So if you're in Halifax or Nova Scotia, actually, I'm not really sure their whole criteria, but definitely that area, reach out to them for all your financing needs. This week- We do, we do Canada wide, just FYI. Okay, there you go, Canada wide. In this episode, we get into some unpopular opinions on real estate investing, but then also we get into some pretty cool stuff about just uh, gender roles in society that may not be super popular. But yeah, please give us a like. Yeah, super- Oh, go ahead, you know. I was just gonna say like super excited to bring this episode to you guys. Like I think this, a lot of the stuff that we talked about is near and dear to my heart and and as a female, we talked about like the roles in kind of society. And I think that's really, really applicable to real estate and business because real estate and business being male dominated field, I think that this is going to resonate with a lot of females out there, hopefully, or maybe kind of shine some light on what it's like to some of the male, like the guys out there. So yeah, like I think we really kind of hit on like some unpopular opinions and I just hope people take the motivation, the intention behind it, don't let some of the the isolated like sentences come across like as like I guess like insensitive because I I really think this is something that you kind of have to think about it's don't let the initial words offend you I guess that's what I'm trying to say but I think this will be a really good, this will be a really good episode um super excited to bring it to you guys and I think people will have a lot of thoughts and opinions on it we really want to hear from you so if you have comments, if you want to reach out to us, like DM us, chat more about it. Um, yeah, I would really love to hear feedback on it and hear about other people's experiences and like their thoughts on it. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. So on that note, please subscribe on YouTube. Leave us a like and a comment if you're listening on Apple or Spotify. Same idea. Give us a, a subscription um, and like our stuff. And if you do enjoy this episode, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. On Instagram, you know, I'm answering DMs here on a daily basis from folks asking questions. So we're all very accessible. On that note, enjoy Perfect. the episode. It's no longer a solo show like the last episode. But this week, it's going to be a fun one. We are talking about some um, borderline controversial things, but they shouldn't be controversial. Like, I think this is just our free-flowing conversation about just some unpopular opinions that we have. But before we get into all of that, Janelle, Ian, what's going on, guys? What's new? I haven't talked to you in a little bit. Ian, how was your trip to Calgary? Yeah, trip was great. Yeah, I caught up with some buddies from essentially high school onward. My accountant was there with me. We uh, we didn't talk much business, but uh, we we played some golf. We had some drinks, and uh, we uh, certainly had a uh, a fun time. And then I don't know if you guys can hear it in my voice, but my voice isn't fully back yet. So I bet it was a bachelor party, correct? So it was technically a diaper party, but it was bachelor party oh. energy. Nice. That's good energy. That is good energy to have. Yeah. Janelle, how about yourself? What's new? What's going on? I was just thinking that I'm like, honestly, I've been working more so the last couple of weeks, uh, which is good. Uh, definitely didn't text Ian Monday, gave him a little day breather there. Uh, but I've been spending time in the lovely north end of Dartmouth, uh, hanging around one of our buildings. It's been <laughs> lovely. All kinds of fun stuff going on there. Yeah, just kind of dealing with change over property management, you know, dealing with tenants there, you know, dealing, we actually have some renovations going on there right now. So that's really exciting. Um, but honestly, like, I don't know. I feel like my life is like a little bit boring right now. I don't know. I went to see Oppenheimer like last week in the theaters. Like that was amazing. How was it? it was so good. Uh, definitely recommend. Um, I'm not like a war buff, like by any means, but like kind of know my history. Um, I was speaking like my friend that I went with, we were talking, we're like, I didn't realize that they like made the atomic bomb and they dropped it after, after like Hitler, like committed suicide or whatever. I'm sure there's someone out there who's going to be like, 
that's a conspiracy theory that he didn't kill himself or whatever. But yeah, I didn't realize that they dropped the bomb on Japan after like everything sort of like quote unquote ended with Germany. And I was like, wow, like it's a the move, but really, really good movie. Like highly recommend. I will. I want to see it so badly. And I was going to go when it dropped, but my wife, Michelle was going to see Barbie with her friends and that guy priority. And also <laughs> you it's didn't like want to three. tag along. <laughs> I did not want to tag along. But Oppenheimer's three hours too. So it's like, she's like, I'll, she'll, she'll is, fall yeah. asleep. And I went, so I'm notoriously bad with movies, like, and stuff like that. Like I'll fall asleep. Like I'm terrible for paying attention. It was funny that you say that. Cause I actually messaged my friend, Sarah, and I was like, Hey, do you want to go see the Barbie movie? And she was like, Oh, I'm going to see Oppenheimer with like my boyfriend. And I was like, okay, I want to come <laughs> to you. And then like, I'll like, I'll bring my boyfriend too. Like I want to come. <laughs> so yeah, Barbie was my first pick. But I got Oppenheimer. I have heard good things about Barbie. Everybody that has seen it, they they found it very humorous. So <laughs> yeah, keep that in mind. people are upset that Barbie's not black. <laughs> oh man, I was talking to this one guy. Oh, you know what? I can't really talk about what, <laughs> what we were saying there, but that's very funny. No, you no, should. No way. No way. That's how we get canceled. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe in the in the yeah. body of the episode we can get into it. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's kind of a a hint of what we're talking about this yeah. week. We're going to talk about some of our unpopular opinions in real estate and outside of real estate. So I got all... Good, we already yeah, started. We already started. <laughs> Good um, segue. <laughs> so let's start on the real... We'll start with the serious stuff and we'll go over to the funner stuff at the end. On the real estate side, Ian, give me, give me one. Give me one unpopular opinion you have in the investing world. Yeah, so uh, also not super serious, but kind of serious, is that all landlords are bad. <laughs> I mean, to oh, us, man. it's like, it's like, yeah, in this community, it's like, yeah, we obviously all know that. But like, it is very popular opinion out there that they're all terrible, that we're enemy number one, all that stuff. So no, that's my funny one. No, my serious one, my unpopular opinion right now is interest rates aren't even that high. Like if you look at it, like it's historically like, yeah, speaking? It does. 100%. yeah, historically speaking. And like, you know, really, I mean, it's like, realistically, interest rates should be like, you know, without all the external factors that are out there should be like 5%, 6%. Like if, if that was yeah. like the normal natural world, it's like, that's chill. It's like, it's like things just suck really hard right now for a lot of people because we live for a few years of like one, two percent, which is like if you actually think about that from like a just like on a global scale or from a whatever perspective you want to look at that as that doesn't even make sense. Like like how 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 could you think that that would be even remotely sustainable for a long um, amount of time? Whereas, yeah, now they're creeping yeah, up. Like, go ahead. Our like our memory, like our, our short term memory is so bad. Like we have like one year of like two, three percent money, or like one, two years. We're just like, this is how the world works. And then all of a sudden it comes up and we're like, this has never happened before. Meanwhile, it's like, no, like very much has. And you know, in yeah. Canada, we get addicted so. to debt, right? So a lot of people, especially over the last three, four, five years, they got into real estate investing pretty heavily. So if you are a new investor and you got in when rates were, like you said, one or two percent, and you thought this is what it's going to be like, you know, real estate's amazing. I'm going to get rich so fast. I'm sure your world got turned upside down pretty quickly here over the past year or so. So that's a, it's an interesting take. No, I like it. We're starting off with a good one. And I've, I've got one next. Oh, let's hear it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unpopular opinion is that it's um, quitting your day job to do real estate full time is an easily achievable thing. I feel like I'm crushing dreams out here, but def I, di I didn't say it was impossible, but it's definitely hard. Like I think people listening to podcasts like such as this one and other ones and like myself included having gotten into real estate and it's like, oh, I'm making this amount of money from like my rentals. Like I can give it like two, three years. I can quit my job and then like live off my rental income. It's a really, really difficult thing. I mean, like, that's also one of the reasons why I started working as a mortgage broker. Cause I'm like, this is good. Like this is sustaining a lot of my income, but like, I needed something extra out here. And then it's just like, there's a couple other factors in there too, that makes it hard to do that. Like 
one is just the cost of living, like having the cost of living jumped so much in the last couple of years. And then two, it, it can, it can be difficult to grow if you don't have a good mortgage broker and you're trying to continue to buy real estate and you don't have like a regular salary income. Um, it can be, it adds challenges to it again, like just to be clear, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think when it's, you hear these podcasts and the U S is a bit different, like their financing from what I can tell is a lot easier. It's, you can kind of get away with like a lot more, but I like think a lot of people naively are like, Oh yeah, like I'm going to quit my job in like five years. A lot of people have done it, but it takes a lot of work. So that's my popular opinion. I, it's like crushing <laughs> dreams over here. I agree. I agree. You know, and I've had a couple of people reach out to me like, Oh man, you don't nurse as much anymore. Cause you're focusing on real estate. Like, how did you do it? It must've been easy. And I'm like, it wasn't easy, but I, I'm also in a specific field where let's say everything goes terribly wrong in real estate. I will always have my degree. I will always have my license. Oh, man. I can fall back and start working. You're, you'll always, always, always be in demand. Exactly. So it's like, I don't want people to look at my situation and just think, oh, that's easy, easily, you know, um, you can just copy me, go in real estate four or five years and then quit. Because even if I quit today, and something goes wrong in real estate tomorrow, I can have a job that third day because that's just the field yeah. that I'm yeah. in. Yeah. So if you were in a job where it's not so easily for you to find a job, like, you know, at the snap of a finger, I don't recommend anybody stop their day job unless they have very adequate cash reserves to kind of sustain themselves if anything goes wrong, or they just have a really strong portfolio that cash flow is really strong with high interest rates with that buffer. Because like, Anyone, like I'm sure you guys, I was cash flowing real good two years ago on some of my properties and now they might be breaking even. So if I was just living off that cash flow, I'd be in some hot, hot water right now. So yeah, 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 it's tough. It's a good, good tip. And just to like throw in, to speak on like my experience with that, like part of the reason that I quit my job is just be, it was becoming just like not, not possible with the job that I was doing. It was like a call to go back to work. There was like an hour and a half drive involved and this and that. So more like from the feasibility perspective, but then obviously, like I said, I just sort of changed careers here and picked up another one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One that more so aligns with your vision and like what you want to do in, in real yeah. estate. Yeah. But that is also what about you, Manny? Unpopular opinion. Yeah. yeah. My unpopular opinion. I feel like some people might hear it and be like, no, man, that works. But I think buying pre-con condos is the worst investment that you can possibly buy. I think it's so silly. All you're doing is banking on appreciation. So like people in Toronto over the past like six, seven years, I know they made killings, you know, they'd buy them, they'd assign the contracts or they'd buy them for like 400 before they were built. And now they're worth 800 at the end. Amazing. Good for you. You took advantage of um, an unprecedented bull run. Good market. Yeah. But if the only way you make money on a real estate transaction is banking on <laughs> 10, 20% appreciation, you are just a speculator. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't call you a gambler per se, because like, you know, it's an estimate, um, a calculator risk. Like, you know, you see the market going up like crazy, you're gonna take advantage of it. But it's like, I just don't think that's wise. Cause I know people that are buying pre condos like now as an investments and it's going terribly. Like they're, when they bought it, let's say like two years ago, the rates were, you know, 2% goes appreciating like crazy, but now rates are 7% and the market's depreciating in some parts of Toronto. So like they're underwater <laughs> and they're in a tough situation. Yeah. So I don't know. I just think they're kind of silly out of all of the investing strategies there are, you know, there's so many ways you can invest in real estate. I just think that's bottom of the barrel. I think, I think it is risky in the sense that off the top of my head, I think that buying pre-con condos, again, we're just kind of focusing on that example. I guess pre-con condos are a lot more, a lot more or totally more common than pre-construction housing, I suppose, um, or like row housing or something like that. Uh, I think in that situation, like you can't control any of those variables. You can't control when the builder is going to finish. You can't control um, building materials, like those price fluctuation, fluctuations. I suppose some contracts that would have like that sort of built into it, or maybe you are getting the upside on it because you're buying it before material prices go up. And then it's just the, like, as you pointed out, like the market, like you have, you're only banking on the market. That's it. That's it. You know, and what we all love real estate is like the, you know, the, there's the, those pillars, you know, there's the cash flow. The appreciation yeah. is one of them, you know, the principal pay down, the tax advantages, the forced appreciation. You have nothing except appreciation. <laughs> 
So it's just, and like you said, the I know so many builders that are underwater because the costs to build got crazy expensive and interest rates got so high. So if you gave two, 300 grand to buy this pre-con and now the builder's stuck, your cash is just in limbo. Man, if I was the builder in that situation, I'd be doing anything and everything I could to like get out of it. But I'm like, well, why would I spend the last like three years of my life like having this project and like what to give people houses for free? They need to feed themselves, eat, whatever, pay the roof over their head. Like I know if I was the builder, I'd be like, I'm finding a way on how to pass this cost off to the customer or or I don't know, like it's just like, well, why am I doing it? I'm going to declare bankruptcy, you know, yeah. just kind of throwing yeah. those options out there. So, yeah. I'm just thinking like in my head how I, like what would I do? And that's what they do. The builders just go bankrupt and then you're screwed. So like the only way this investment strategy yeah. can make sense is like, if you don't mind moving into that pre-con condo and making it your home. Yeah. I'd be curious to hear from someone who has done that, like buying pre-con, like what their experiences are and like how that's been for them. I would be curious to hear from someone and get their experience. Me too, but somebody yeah, who's perfect. done it recently, because I know people yeah, who have that's done it. it. It's like... you know, from from 17 to 22 yeah. and yeah. they made it boatloads of money you know like ridiculous yeah. amounts of money buying things for like you know condos in toronto are very expensive like people are buying these condos you know three four hundred grand so it's like of course if you bought a 300 yeah. grand condo downtown toronto eight years ago you're i know one guy who bought like 40 wow. of them you know and he's so so he's like now he has like 40 condos that are worth almost a million dollars but like he bought them when they were 300 grand. So it's like that guy has great experiences with condos, I'm sure, you know, but the guy that bought one last summer, that's the person I'd like to hear how it's going for them. So if you're listening to this podcast, um, that guy or girl, give us a show. You can be a guest. Kind of just made me think of this. Like, I think this is, I have another pretty bad, <laughs> unpopular opinion on this um in the real estate world and i think this could apply to like pretty well like most industries i would say most people you meet are like they're not so, i know that sounds like really really bad but that is like S it's successful horrible, in what it, regard? that's my honest truth like how, what what defines successful success in, yeah i think that a lot of people what they're saying they're doing is how they're doing does is not equal to how they're actually doing um i think you and i well three of us know someone who on paper it's like they own so many units and like they're doing this and that and it's like oh well let's add up how many private loans and conventional loans have on their properties and how their portfolio is performing and and like basically how close they are to like bankruptcy um or having like their properties foreclosed on and i think that a lot of people out there like what you see they're like oh like i'm doing this and i'm doing that or the people who say like oh, i've got 200 units and i'm like okay well 150 of them are with a group of like 20 people so okay all of a sudden you know what that looks like on the front of it like compared to like what it looks like when you peek behind peek behind the curtains on it i just think that it's a it's a natural human tendency to do this as well to be like hey like i'm doing this and this and I think people will do it sometimes consciously, sometimes like unconsciously, or they're talking about cash flow and this and that. And it's just like, no, like I, I, I know I can find myself easily getting like, oh, like this person's doing great. This person's doing great. And then I kind of take the time to think about it. And I'm like, well, like not actually, I think I'm letting myself feel bad over it. Like, I don't know. What do you guys think on it? <laughs> You know, oh, I'll let you jump in. I have on. a take on this one, but yeah, it is all too common, you know, and, uh, you know, they're, they're like, again, especially when you're getting into the, we're going to scale up and buy a bunch of units. I mean, there, there's really only two ways to do that. And it's, yeah, it's either bringing in a lot of people and, and, you know, getting a smaller percent of the equity, which again, is still fine over time. That's a great way to do it. Happy to do it. Or as you mentioned, you get a bunch of promissory notes, you have all this debt and yes, you own a lot more of the property, but when interest rates start creeping up, when there's delays in construction, when there's unforeseen stuff, like I would not be able to sleep at night doing it that way. So yeah. um, that's why um, I know with Manny and I, especially like the, that's how we're doing a lot of our U.S. stuff is, yeah, we're taking on a bunch of partners. They get a little bit of the equity. They bring money in and they're just along for the ride. If the deal goes great, life is great. If the deal 
you know, starts to sputter out a little bit because like, yeah, interest rates, you know, we're not going to necessarily do it in, you know, six months or eight months or whatever. It's like, that's fine. It's like, they're along for the ups and the downs. It's the people that you say, I'm going to give you like a 15% annualized return on this million dollars that I've borrowed. And you have to, you know, you have to pay that money back, like regardless of how the deal's going. And it's like that would stress me out. So I don't think it's worth the, yeah. the trade off in just, more equity for having to meet these unrealistic uh, expectations. But yeah, like 100% what you're saying. And I think it's totally fine to do that. Like, it's, I definitely believe in like doing exactly what you guys are doing. Like, I've done it before giving away equity or giving up promissory notes, not to do a project. But I think it's putting yourself in these unrealistic positions um, or positions where it's highly unlikely or it's really, really, really difficult to pay your investors back. And I think for those people, what they're thinking in their head, like their reality becomes so skewed that they think everything's fine. And like what you're saying, it's just like, no, like I don't think I could sleep at night knowing that like the chances and the probability probability of like me paying my investors back or or being able to pivot like with your investors because you can do that too that's i think people who have this kind of skewed reality going on yeah it's it's like scary <laughs> oh and there's a I, lot I of them more guys yeah there, there is a lot there's a lot and on the same the like, same idea of what you're going on here like my kind of unpopular take was that um social media is just like a highlight reel. And I feel like everyone would kind of agree yeah. to that because if you just take a look at people's social medias, it looks like they're doing amazing. If you just see their Facebook posts with their, you know, their Instagram stories, they're doing amazing. But in reality, they don't show the challenges. That's why I appreciate the guys that will post all the hurdles that they're going through and how they're overcoming them. Um, because it's a tough market out there right now, right? So if you're by yourself or if you are just showing that you're only getting wins and you're not showing the struggles along the way. I don't want to say it's disingenuous because I'm sure there's some people that are just killing this market and they're just super successful and good on them. You know, like I know guys that are just yeah. doing really well because they were able to capitalize. Um, but yeah, you're right. People, you yeah. can't just trust people's words. You know, you have to be, be careful. Yeah. I think it's just a natural tendency for people to, I don't want to say lie because I think it's coming from a, like a good place. Um, and that, I think I would make that point too. Like, I'm not saying everyone's out there going, like waking up in the morning being like, Oh, I'm going to go on social media and talk about how many units I have, but not talk about like the fact that I only own like 20, 30% of them. Like, I don't think people are doing that with that intention. I think it's, I think it's a natural human, like safety mechanism to do it. I would, I would probably think, you know, no. And I yep, think that, there's a lot of people out there who are doing really, really well. And like, they're just not talking about it. They're just, that's kind of their, their way of doing it. And then the people who are out there on social media and they're talking about their journey. Um, like, I really appreciate those people too. Like, I think that that does like add value in sharing the journey. And um, so, yeah, anyway, that's just my <laughs> popular opinion. I think it should be a popular opinion. I think it's, that should be, <laughs> every, everyone should agree <laughs> with us on that one. And like, also just like people, a lot of people just talk the talk. I think you need to really take advice and learn from the people that are actually walking the walk. You know, a lot of people talk yeah. about what to do, but in reality, they, they don't do it. It's same with the idea of getting yeah. coached by someone that hasn't been in real estate very long, or like they have a couple of duplexes, but now they want to rave about, you know, a mentorship program. Like people can talk. People are very good at talking and social media yeah. is big right now and branding and marketing and, and all this stuff is very important. But at the same time, the lived experience and people that have done it and are doing it, those are the ones that you should be listening to more. I, I kind of like as a somewhat like rule of thumb, like when I'm speaking to people, it, like if I want to know if they're like a good investor, I, I want to figure out if they've done a refi yet. Yeah. Have you done the refi? Have you finished the last step? Yes. The most important. Yeah. Oh, you didn't, but you bought seven houses last year, but you haven't paid any of your promissory notes back and you haven't paid any of your investors back. Wow. That's awesome. You scammed a bunch of people. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. They have. Oh, yeah. They have. <laughs> that's what happened. Like, yeah. Yep. Cool. Well, 
do we want to shift over into some unpopular life opinions just about yeah, the world? Someone, someone else go. <laughs> Ian, Ian, give me one. What's a, your unpopular opinion on the world right now? Let's, let's hear something juicy. Pineapple on pizza is the best. <laughs> no. I think it's pretty good. I wouldn't call it the best, but I enjoy it. No. It's the best. Mm -hmm. Undisputed. Yeah. I'm going to go with that. What about anchovies? You're wrong. A anchovies on pizza? <laughs> No, no. I don't, I don't think I've ever eaten an anchovy in my life. I don't think I have I don't either. Think I, I would either. Yeah, I would too. I think it's very hard yeah. to mess up a pizza. Uh, I've rarely had a pizza where I've ate it. And I'm like, wow, that was disgusting. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Only if the bread was really bad. Yeah. Only if the yeah. bread was like uncooked. I think then I'd be like, this is disgusting. True. Yeah. I don't I think agree. I've had that yet. Luckily, <laughs> but yeah. I would yeah. agree. What about you, Janelle? Me. So actually, before I let you go, Janelle, what really brought this whole idea of this topic was maybe two, three podcasts ago at the end of a, a call, me and Janelle were just talking. <laughs> and I'm like, man, what we were just talking about there is what would be an awesome episode to just release to the world. Of course, it would go viral, like you said it would, <laughs> maybe for good reasons and bad reasons. But so many opinions. But I think, I don't yeah. know, I, those are the conversations that I enjoy. Of course, we can we can tame it. We don't have to be completely unfiltered. We're, this is still a public space, I guess. And well, I guess we're also uh, oh we're man, like um, I don't I don't even know if we should like air this. Like we might have to talk about this later. But like unpopular opinion. <laughs> right, let's hear it. Like I'm excited. Women, are, women have a harder time in the working world than men. That's like my really tamed down. Women comment. have a harder time like, in the working world than men. I don't think that should be unpopular at all. You guys have children. <laughs> yeah, like have babies. I think that. Yeah, uh... this is not. This is totally, totally different than saying, I'm going to get, I'm like, I don't even know if I should go. But like, this is not the same as saying that women cannot do as good or better than men. I think that deep down, like our true like motivation is coming from a woman who's in business and really enjoys business. And like, I'm, I haven't met a lot of other females in Halifax who have done the, some of the stuff in real estate that like I've done so far. But I think like our deep like motivation comes from family and men, men and female, I think our deep motivation comes for like family and our children. And for men, it comes out in, I read like a really good book on this it comes out in like, I love my family. I want to support them. So I need to go out and work and provide for them. And I think women, our deep motivation comes out in like, I want to take care of my family. And our best way of doing that is caretaking. However, there's like so much other stuff to like kind of talk about this. And this is like the really like two second condensed version of it, but just naturally that's how we best do it. And then when nowadays, because of this and that, or you could just take the example of like, Hey, you have a female and a male, they're in a family, they have two kids. They're both 40. The kids are somewhat grown up. Now, what does the female do? Let's just assume she stayed at home to take care of the kids because she chose to do that. Making a bunch of assumptions here. Then if she goes out in the working world, and let's take out the fact that the male has a 20 year advantage on her in terms of like working experience, I think just deep down, the male has a deeper ingrained motivation to work and do business or whatever it is. Whereas females, we don't have that as much. I think our deep drive isn't there. I would argue the same point if you had a single mother who is also the caretaker and also, and then we see this a lot, I think, and also the like quote unquote breadwinner of the family. I think you'll see a lot of single females who crush it in the working world because for them, it's like my motivation is like my family. I need to make money. I need to take care of them. But if you take the traditional family, I, I just think it's sometimes harder for us to get the motivation. And this is also, again, like neglecting all other factors. We're kind of taking like a really controlled situation here. There's so many other factors to throw in here, but like, I don't, if I got into them, this would be like a three hour conversation. But yeah, like really, really unpopular opinion. I don't even like saying it. Like I'll put that out there. Like it hurts to say it. Like I wish I could say that deep down, like I have the same motivation, but I, I've seen it in like male counterparts. Like they seem to dig down and get it easier than I do. I have to work harder at it. No, oh, that's, that's a good take. That's a, that's an introspective one too. You know, that's something yeah. I would never be able to oh, really, it's gonna... I would never understand that. Obviously I'm a man, which I feel like it's controversial to say. It's going to go in, delete in my itself. Instagram and hide from the world. Cause I'm every female in Halifax is going to like throw egg on me. Oh, I don't think so. I, I think uh, that people will like but, the, um, 
the honesty and vulnerability of it. that's a good that's a good one but yeah like it sucks like i like i said i hate saying it but just again to be absolutely clear this does not mean that i think that females cannot be as successful or more successful than men that's totally possible again like look at myself for example i can think of many other people out there like many other females who are like crushing it it's just i think it's just just a thing uh, like a biological deep ingrained no that's good that's a good one i hope I people listen good. to this podcast <laughs> and and respond yeah. to us um i think i i have one it's honestly similar similar kind of ideas janelle but just from a different perspective i think that society right now i think just a lot of people are lazy but i think specifically a lot of men are lazy in my perspective you know janelle when we were talking about this talk, yeah i know exactly what you're talking about you were yeah. talking about how you're you know you're your boyfriend said that he wouldn't mind taking care of you type of thing. And you're like, you yeah. you've never had. Oh, it'd be the ultimate dream. Right. It's like the ultimate thing that he would strive for. He's like, that's all I want. And that's my ultimate goal too. I always, I've been posting this one post on Instagram, like annually. It's this um, quote from Brad Lee. And he talks about how, like, if his wife tried to spend all his money every single day and she was successful, that means he doesn't have enough money. I have that same opinion. It's like, and that comes from the same place of just wanting to take care of my family to the to the fullest. But I just feel like most men don't have that goal. Like I would love if Michelle didn't have to work. I think she always will because she doesn't want to just be yeah. a housewife or she'd be bored and she just wants to have some sort of purpose. And that's fine. You know, you could, I'd love, I don't want you to just sitting around unhappy for no reason just because you don't have to work so she'll always work but i'd like her to work because she wants to work and have something to do throughout the days socialize with her work friends and i think she still somewhat enjoys her job but if she didn't have to that would be the perfect and not just me like, like you know my parents and then like future i think it's like most men yeah yeah but i, I don't yep. think that's most men most men because like most men go to work nine come home at five you know they make sub 100 grand a year how in the world are you going to support your family unless you live in, you know, somewhere really yeah. far away where your life is very cheap? But in reality, the world's expensive. Life is expensive. Inflation's high. Groceries are high. Mortgages are high. Houses are expensive. You know, 100K a year is not what it once was. So I don't think people think like us or like your boyfriend or like me or like Ian. Like the idea of making 100 grand a year, people think that's great. But guys like us, you know, we think about making 100 grand a month. How do we make 200 grand a month? You know, this is yeah. how we can really comfortably take care of our families and not have a worry in the world financially. But this is a very rare trait in men. And I've probably come across think, like, maybe five or six guys that think like that. To like add on to that too, like just what we're both saying too, I think a lot of people will take like one sentence and like, they'll focus on like that one sentence. They'll be like, oh, Janelle said like women should work. Or Manny said like, he doesn't want his wife to work. And it's like, that's so taken out of context. Like you're not, <clears throat> you're not paying attention to the intention behind the sentence or the meaning. Exactly. No, the meaning is that like, I love my family. Like I love my wife and I want to work as hard as possible. So she doesn't have to. Yes. And so that she's happier and she's can live a more free life. Like that's the intention behind it. So that's like one part of it. It can so, so, so easily be taken out of context. Then the other part too is like, again, like this is kind of the conversation that Manny and I were getting to earlier. And um, and I think like it does pertain to real estate because we talk a lot on this show about like motivation and, and you know, how to build a business. And truly, like I think building a business comes from like motivation. If you don't absolutely like die for it, want it, like it's not going to happen. But then to talk about like what you're saying about where you think like men are lazy, like I would agree. I think that this society, like the society that we're in, this is like a bigger world problem. But like the society that we're in is such a strange society. Like we're totally leaving the male, female traditional roles. I think like what we expect men to be and like what we expect women to be has changed a lot. I'd say like kind of in the last 10 years, like it's somewhat recent. And that it's really shooken things up. Like, that's kind of my thoughts on it. I would agree with uh, pretty much what both of you guys are saying. And again, yeah, I appreciate your honesty there, Janelle. I don't think every girl, even if she were to be thinking that, would necessarily say that. But, None of them uh, want it. We don't want to admit it. It's yeah, like admitting yeah. like defeat. It's like, oh, like I can't do it. Yeah. 
but um, no, <laughs> that, yeah, so again, appreciate you sharing that. And then Manny, yeah, hundred percent. It's like, yeah, I'm, I don't have a wife or whatever. Don't have a family, but it's like, if, you know, when the time comes, <laughs> Ian uh, has it, a family, you do. <laughs> no, not my, my own fa- I have my, my family, but not my, like, Sorry. my, like future family. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, you don't have a wife like, and kids yet. <laughs> I don't have a wife and kids. Sure? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> pretty sure. <laughs> um, but, but um, again, when when the time comes, I would want to be in a position where it's like, OK, yeah, I don't I, I don't want them to have to work. You know, I want to, to them to be able to do whatever they want if they want to work. Absolutely. But I don't want that to be a reason that they don't have to spend time with the family and all that stuff. And for that matter, too, it's like in like five, six years or whatever it might be, it's like, I don't even want to work that much. You know what I mean? It's like something that I've always said. It's like, that's why we're, you know, like Manny said, it's like why we're grinding so hard right now. It's so we have not just the freedom for our wives not to work. It's so we have the freedom that we won't need to work. And and when we do work, it won't be the same way we're working now, but it'll be, <clears throat> you know, we're going to keep building systems. So we don't have to be there plugged in 24 seven. So we don't have to, you know, do every little task. A lot of it's just going to be delegated, all that stuff. So work will still be, uh, be getting done, but it's not us being the ones to do it all the time. So yeah, it's very much so grind now. So we have that freedom for our family and that freedom for ourselves where we don't have to work as much anymore. And, uh, yeah, you don't you don't see a lot of people out there trying to do that. So no, you don't. Yeah. And I think it's I mean, we just, have similar values. Yeah. That's what it kind of comes down yeah. to. I guess that's what kind of why we work together, and that's why we're all friends. Um, but if people don't have those same values, they will think differently, and they'll think we're crazy or you know we're old fashioned. But I don't know. That's just that's just how we are. That's how I am. Yep. Yeah, and it gets kind of crazy too, like that we're talking about this and like I think we're all kind of like oh like I almost don't want to say this but the like the feeling of being able to voice these opinions is difficult now because it's like this fear of like backlash and yeah it's just like I don't know it's it's a really strange world and I feel like this is this this, I don't know this podcast is going to go long but that same idea of you talking about like like people aren't afraid are afraid to voice these opinions the people that do voice these opinions are the ones that they get a lot of engagement, you know, because this, what we're talking about shouldn't be that polarizing, but it is. And also like shouldn't, people, yeah. this one guy, his name's Matt Pichet. He gets on his Instagram. It's, I don't know if you guys follow him, but it's amazing, but he'll get on there and just tell you straight up what he thinks. And his rationale is like, I'm rich. You guys can't cancel me. There's no, there's nothing you can do. So I'm going to tell you my opinion on things. You can agree with it. You can disagree with it, but you can move on. But I think I don't think what we're yeah. saying is that controversial at all. Just yeah. unpopular opinion. And like just yeah, just maybe yeah. mildly unpopular. Yeah. But I like it's funny because I'm thinking like, oh, if you guys were talking about this and I wasn't here, it'd be a totally different conversation. Like you guys wouldn't be able to say any of this. Well, we couldn't. Like, we're not yeah, women. Yeah, That's the truth. Like we don't yeah. know. It would be harder, we can't yeah. Feel um, what it's like to be a woman, so we could never really fully understand what you're saying. Yeah. And then like, that's like, not to like get into it too, but like I was saying, like, if I kind of dove into like the associated difficulties with all of that and like being a woman, like in business, and this is to like all the women out there, like, it's hard, like, it's hard because we're not the majority in certain industries of the working world, like nursing, for example, highly majority women, teachers, and then high majority of women, but being a mortgage broker here, and then being like in business, like being in real estate too. Um, real estate agents, I think majority women. Really? But investors, I would say probably majority mm-hmm. men. So because there's, it's so like male dominated, of course it's set up for you guys. And then you get used to dealing with men and then it's trades. It's like, of course it, like you're going to deal with them like a man, like in trades. So then like me being a female in it, it's, it is harder. And it's, and I was trying to explain this to someone the other day and they were just like, huh, like I don't get it. Yeah, no, they wouldn't. Maybe maybe a woman will listen to this and it will resonate with them. I hope it does. But for guys, this is this is good to hear because this is something we'd never. How would we know this? You know, unless a woman told us. Yeah, 
and like it's it's hard to explain that it's just like well it's like even as simple as like oh like when you show up to work and you know or you're at like a like a site whatever you're talking to like a coworker or your carpenter or your contractor and you're a 30 year old man and they're a 30 year old man are you going to get along with them better are you going to make jokes with them easier you will like these are all the subtleties that go like through my day but when i show up it's like a really different dynamic and it's like oh well like is there a romantic thing going on are they gonna think this about me oh you're like a pretty young female like are you gonna like is the first thing that's coming to your mind like i'm looking for a girlfriend i'm looking for someone to hook up with like whatever but if it's a man that shows up like those are not thoughts that are going to go through their head and this is not to like this is making a really general statement here but then like like well, we're not we're just not we're probably not going to be friends we're probably not gonna i'm not gonna be like oh like yeah i just like want to grab a beer after this and like hang out but if you're a guy it's just like oh yeah like it's hot out we want to grab a beer and we'll keep talking about this quote like that's yeah. so much more likely to happen for you than it is for me and like and it, then take that subtlety of like that one instance and then apply it to everything again this is just kind of throwing out like one example like what it's like it's just it's just like being a female in this i would equate it to always swimming in a lake where the breeze is always running running against you. That's like how I would describe it. It's really subtle and it's always there. And at the end of the day, like you just gotta, like this is speaking to like all the women out there. At the end of the day, like you just gotta come in here and be like, that's the cards I'm dealt and I'm gonna like beat it every day. And I'm gonna do better and I'm gonna show everyone that like I'm just as qualified to be here and I can do just as good as job as you, if not better. But then like don't hold resentment at people for it. Because there's a lot of really, really good people out there. Manny, Ian, like you guys included, obviously. There's a lot of really, really good people out there who want to help you. So don't take that resentment and throw it at them. Like they're your teammates. So I think if like there's other females out there who are like struggling with this, like that would be like my number one kind of like advice to them. Yeah, that's great advice. That's great advice. I love it. I guess uh, that's a good note for us to leave it at this podcast this is this has been a fun one I yeah think, i don't know about you guys but i i enjoy this one a lot yeah i think uh our listeners no, this is good I, i'm glad that i'm glad that we're talking about it you know yeah you know yeah. and if people like this stuff man i got way more i got way more unpopular opinions we we we, we, we <laughs> yeah. only touched on like one one generalized you know just how men and women are different but we can we can go into this one all day but yeah mm-hmm. on that note Thank you for listening to another episode of the Refined Real Estate Podcast. This was a really cool one. We had a good time. We talked about some stuff that's a little outside of the the normal real estate topics. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you do, please let us know. And just again, to finish off, please give us a like, a subscribe, and a comment on all the platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and reach out to us. Again, we're accessible. We love to talk about real estate and we love to spread the word. So give us a shout whenever you want. And that's it. Thank you for listening.